Hi, my name is Pastor Hal York, and welcome to Truth in the Trenches. Today we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10 through 13. And behold, a woman comes to meet him, dressed as a harlot and cunning of heart. She is boisterous and rebellious. Her feet do not remain at home. She's now on the streets, now on the squares, and lurks by every corner. So she seizes him and kisses him. Once again, we find ourselves in the, these chapters in Proverbs dealing with the, the issue of immorality. And it's, it's personified as a woman, as we see in these chapters. And in chapter 7, we find this young man. He talks about his, verse 6, this young man, this man watching him. He's foolish. He's naive. He's thinking he can play with sin and not get burned. He's wandering into the red light district. He's wandering onto a street that he knows what's down there. He knows what's there. He's maybe just curious. But if you wander into, wander into a burning building, it doesn't matter why, you're going to get hurt. And it doesn't matter why he's there, even if he's just curious. He's playing with fire and he's going to get burned. He has been led there by his own lust and enticed it maybe the first time. Again, it doesn't matter. The verse 10 begins with an ominous word, behold. It's a word meant to make us stand up and take notice. Look at this. Watch this. It carries the idea of, of, of amazement. Now, this is not a good kind of amazement. It's a sad kind of amazement. Amazed at what is about to transpire or happen to this young man. Amazed at how quickly it comes upon him. Amazed at how foolish he was to put himself in such a position. Amazed at how clueless he is to the dangers of such a proposition. Amazed at how quickly he gives in to her enticements. It ends in verse 22, sadly. Suddenly he follows her as an axe goes to the slaughter. He never sees it coming. When we start playing around with sin, especially sexual sin, and start watching things and dwelling on things that are impure and fill our minds with lustful thoughts, we... We, don't have, we do not have to go looking for opportunities to act on those thoughts. Satan will make sure the opportunities find us. And that's what we have in these verses. Behold, a woman comes to meet him. She doesn't wait for him to find her. She's on a mission. She comes to him. She comes to meet him. And you can tell by the way she's dressed, she's not coming to invite him to a church picnic. She is dressed as a harlot. It no doubt means she was wearing a veil of some kind and clothing that made it obvious what she was looking for. In Genesis chapter 38, 14 and 15, we get a little bit of a hint as to what that might look like. She took off her widow's garments and covered herself with a veil, wrapping herself up and sat at the entrance of Enim, which is on the road to Timnah. For she saw that Sheila was, going, was grown up and she had not been given him, to him in marriage. And when Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute, for she had covered her face. So this woman dresses as a harlot, but she's not a harlot. She has a husband, but she knows she is more apt to trap this young man or any young man if he thinks she's not married. She obviously doesn't care, but he might. If he knows she's married, he knows that can get messy, and the husband can come after him and do something harsh deadly even. If you know she's a harlot, hey, there's no strings attached, it's no problem, So at least so he thinks. And she may even be dressed as a temple prostitute. Verse 14 says, I was due to offer peace offerings today and I paid my vows. So just in case he's not sure, let's make it a religious activity. But she's dressed as a harlot. Not only does it tell us how she dressed on the outside, it tells us the deceitfulness of her heart, the cunning of her heart. Her skill in, means to, skill in achieving one's end by deceit or evasion. It means to be crafty. She's boisterous. She's loud. She's noisy. She's troubled. She's rebellious. She's rejecting authority, rejecting standards, rejecting God. She's deceitful, cunning, loud, noisy, rebellious. The promises of delights unimaginable, the pleasures that are unforgettable flow from her lips. Her feet wander from her home, wander from the trust of her husband, from her faithfulness to the marriage bonds. He's out of town. 
Her faithfulness is only eye service. When he's gone, it's hit the streets. She is desperate. She's not hiding her intentions nor hiding her pursuit. She's in the streets. And if that doesn't work, she's in the squares, the marketplaces. She lurks by every street corner where the streets meet. Any place where there are people, that's where you'll find her. The more people, the better your chances of finding what you're looking for. And verse 13 is, a, is an ominous verse. So she seizes him. He's caught. It means to prevail or to prevail upon and kisses him. Now this is obviously activities that a normal woman would never think of doing in that culture. Her brazenness of taking the initiative, with a brazen face she states, the time is now. My husband is gone. I've made preparations. And with her many persuasions she entices him. With her flattering lips she seduces him. But she doesn't care about him. She just wants her lust to be satisfied. As I've said many times, this is how immorality, sexual sin, presents itself. In our culture, we're bombarded with it. Online, Hollywood, it's everywhere. The enticements are well designed and the millions of dollars are spent to make them as seductive as possible. And all kinds of steps are being taken now in our culture to hide the subtle and dangerous effects that happen when we give in to the sexual temptation. We don't hear about it anymore. We hear nothing about it, but it's rampant. Just talk to a doctor sometime. You'll see how rampant it really is. Just look at the divorce courts and family courts. Suicide amongst teenagers. Much of it revolves around this whole idea of sexual immorality. It'll find you. If we are careless, if we're playing around with purity, impurity, we're not guarding our hearts, our eyes, and our ears, it will find you. It'll come at you like this woman portrayed in this in this text. It'll be sudden. There'll be promises. There'll be promises of pleasure and secrecy. No one will know it. It will be powerful, loud, and appealing to maybe that rebellious streak you've been letting take over in your thinking and your actions. You're, it's appealing to that. So be wise. Our eyes, our ears feed our thoughts, and our thoughts lead to actions, and our actions always have consequences, and none more so than in sexual immorality. If you're not serious about moral purity, impurity will find you and it will come at you like this woman came at this young man. She was too much for him. She overtook him suddenly. That's the reality of infidelity and immorality. Many victims she has cast down. Therefore, flee sexual sin. You are literally running for your life. So don't look back. Pursue holiness in the fear of God to the glory of God. So may this truth guide us and guard us in the trenches of life as we seek to live our lives for the glory of God and the good of others. May God bless.